Today we're talking about how to uncover requirements. It's gonna be good, so stay right there. So we have got to talk about how to uncover requirements. What is the number one tip to uncover the real requirements? And really what you have to do to uncover requirements is to understand the customer. You have to understand the client. You have to understand who you're serving. You have to understand what they care about, what's their goals, what they're trying to do. If you immerse yourself in the world of your customers, then you understand what it is that is a challenge to them, what they're trying to do, and then you can see where your process or your service can improve their world. That is the way you uncover requirements. Get out of the mindset where you're thinking about features and steps in the process. That's not how you uncover requirements. You have to understand, empathize with the person who's gonna be going through whatever you're designing so that you can see what it is that means the most to them and you can build your process and improve your features or your software around that. So many times we spend a lot of time discussing features and buttons and design and all that stuff, but we're not really understanding what they're trying to do, right? We're not really putting ourselves in the world of the customer. Once you, as a business analyst, can empathize with the customer, you understand the customer's journey, you know what they're trying to do, you understand their jobs to be done, you know who your personas are, you can identify your ideal customer profile, you are far ahead in making sure that whatever you suggest, whatever you come up with, whatever concepts that you, co you conceptualize, will actually have impact. In order for you to empathize with the customer, you have to understand their journey. So user journey mapping is another technique that business analysts use. And it's kind of just trying to understand the journey that the user is going through to consume your product or your service. So for example, let's take buying something online. You can see that the user will go online, they may look at various products, and then they decide to look at the review, they decide on which product they like, they buy the product, they sit home and they wait, they come home one day and they see the product in front of their door and they're so excited, they open the product and they realize, oh, they bought the wrong product. Now, if your process to get to that point was friendly and good, they may be willing to return the product and go back and buy the correct product on the same website. They loved the, the shopping experience so much that they'll go back and Amazon knows this very well. They make returning so easy that if I get a product and it's the wrong thing, I don't, I don't care. I'm going back to Amazon, <laughs> you know? So because Amazon understands the user, you know, we are all humans and we can empathize with other people and if we know that the process failed and we got the wrong product we don't really blame Amazon we just say oh somebody made a mistake it's okay I'll keep going and shopping because it's so pleasant to shop there so understanding the users emotions to go with not just the feature of the process they, they, how do they feel when they're going through this and it's not just a UX design issue it's about you as a business analyst understanding the whole environment in which that person is living, that client is living. If you are designing something for businesses, so it's a business to business environment, you still have to understand how does that other business who's consuming your service, how do they operate? What is the world they live in? How does their industry operate? You know, um, what is it that they care about? And so you have to empathize, you have to put yourself in the shoes, you have to get them in your mind, you have to be the spokesperson for the client so that you can understand and develop and build 
processes and systems and features that will actually help them in their journey. So not just to think about how the technology can help them, but also how can you make their ex experience a delight, you know? So we talked about user journey mapping. We talked about um, understanding their experience and, and, and embracing what they're doing and immersing ourselves in their world. But also there's a persona. So you could have different personas based on the feature or function you're trying to do. For example, if you're in sales, you may have the sales rep, you may have um, the sales manager. So these two roles might be doing different things but they may all be interacting with your process or your system. So you have to understand what does the manager care about? What does the sales rep care about? And how can you be a delight to both? Or you may get to a point where you decide that you need to identify your ideal customer. So we talked about the ICP, who is your ideal customer profile? That is to say, I am targeting customers who are in the health industry, who have a salary of this amount and a disposable income of this amount. So you can have some dem demographic values that determine your um, ideal customer profile, but it's not just about stats, it's not about statistics. It's about also how do they feel? These are people who enjoy, um, I don't know, let's say I was McDonald's and I'm trying to sell um, milkshake. Actually, this was one of the case studies I heard on the Harvard Business Review recently on one of the wonderful podcasts that they have. And it was about how McDonald's was able to um, 7x the amount of sales in trying to, to improve their milkshake product because they understood the jobs to be done. They understood that their milkshake wasn't just competing against Wendy's or some other fast food milkshake, but it was also competing against the, the mom who would have given their kids bananas in the morning instead of going to get a milkshake. So they understood that it was not just about the product, product, product. It was also about the world the product lived in. If they made the cup size smaller, it could fit into the car holder so the kid can have less spills when their mom is driving them to school. So things like that. Understanding the journey. For example, people would say that the coffee at Dunkin Donuts is better than the coffee at Starbucks, you know, but I prefer to go to Starbucks because of the whole experience. I feel like it's a place for you to think and study and have a meeting. So they actually provided this environment that was very conducive to, to, to creativity and coming up with things and studying and things like that. And you don't really have the same environment at Dunkin Donuts. So they understood that their ideal customer was a person who just wanted some peace and quiet maybe not quiet but they wanted a place to meet to talk to work and they could get a coffee and a sandwich at the same time you know what i mean so maybe dunkin donuts maybe focus on having the best donuts and having the best coffee but starbucks focus on the entire world of that customer you know so they understood what was going on so sometimes i want to drink my coffee while i'm working but i got to drive to go get the coffee then i go to go back and do the work so if i could bring my laptop and do both then that was a part of making my life easier so those are the kind of things that we should get into which is not just here's a feature how do you use it but how does it ingrain itself into my life that i'm already doing how does it add to the experience and I'm already on this journey where in the journey can I interject this process to make my journey easier and more pleasant so that's what we have to think about as we're trying to uncover requirements to not just be focused on the features but to make sure that we're actually empathizing with the customers we're actually understanding their world and we're making it better Thank you, that was my tips for today. I really hope that you found this useful as usual. Please subscribe, click the button, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.